Hi friends. This week, I'm gonna work on my draw your journal again. I haven't picked it up in a while because so many of the prompts are about myself personally and I'm pretty boring. So prepare for a good nap. The first page I'm gonna do says draw your number. Dedicate this page to your favorite number. I actually started this page for the first episode that I did, but I didn't have time for a fourth page in that video. So enjoy this super nostalgic footage from a whole eight months ago. I spent so much time measuring and drawing guidelines, trying to make each stripe even, and there's still parts that look wonky. Huh? The reason that I intended to do this page in the other video was because I had done the draw your sport page and chosen roller derby. 123 was my roller derby number. I actually chose that because ever since high school, I've seen that number everywhere on buses, police cars, and even the clock. I'll frequently look at a clock right as it shows 123. It became a thing where my sister and I will even text each other whenever we see a 123. So it sort of was an inside joke to have that as my jersey number. After lining the outside of the numbers with a black liner, I erased all the lines as much as I could. For the stripes, I used alcohol markers. They do bleed a lot on this paper, but I have a ton of area to cover and I want the colors to be really bold. Don't focus too long on the widths of the lines, they don't make any sense. And really don't pay attention to the fact that the 2 and 3 are bigger than the 1. After the marker part's done, you can see there's some bleeding, some missed spots, and some uneven lines. To fix it up, I used colored pencils. I picked colored pencils that matched as closely as possible, and I used them to straighten out and sharpen the lines, cover up blank spots, and blend out any areas where there were mistakes. This took barely any time, and because I didn't need much coverage, it saved my hands a ton of pain from pressing really hard with the pencils. Then I used a white gel pen to cover any areas where the marker bled past the liner. You can't tell me that's not satisfying to watch. Here's a before and after. It may seem like a lot of work for only a slight effect, but my OCD brain loves it. I sealed this page in with packing tape because I don't even want a chance Mod Podge smearing the liners. And I worked so carefully with the tape to make sure I did not have any bubbles. Here's this page done. Even though it's sort of a simple concept, I really like how it turned out. Nice and bold and colorful. Next page I'm gonna do says draw your garden. Draw an arrangement of flowers. For this page, I'm gonna use a separate sheet of paper because I'm gonna be using alcohol markers again. Why didn't I do that on the last page? I don't know. Don't ask questions I don't know the answer to. Mind your own business. I chose this page because it didn't require me to think. It told me exactly what to draw. And ever since I did that reverse coloring book, I've been wanting to draw flowers. I sketched out six flowers because I actually had a plan. You did? Yeah, but it didn't work out so I erased them all. <gasps> just kidding. I'm just lightening the pencil lines. My plan was to do a flower for each color of the rainbow, but my dumb brain forgot about green. I mean, I'm sure technically there are green flowers, but I didn't really want to draw a green flower with a green stem. So I switched the green for pink. I use markers again for a base layer, not as much for coverage this time, but to make blending and shading a little bit easier when I go back in with colored pencils. So we have a yellow rose, a purple hyacinth, or what Google said was a hyacinth when I Googled tall purple flowers, a pink orchid, an orangey pink lily. These are my favorite flower. They smell so good. A red tulip and a blue hydrangea. 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 I don't know how to say that. I added stems and these completely inaccurate orchid buds. Because that is not what they look like. Then I went back in with colored pencils to blend the shadows and add a few more details. For some flowers, they were really helpful redefining the shapes or changing a color I didn't like to match better. Like I didn't really like the warm purple on the center of these flowers but I was able to correct it with a different colored pencil. 
but I did get a little carried away with details on some of the flowers. I spent so much time working on these little veins on the orchid petals, and I kind of hate them. It looks like a weird pink snowflake. And because I regretted it so much, I did the exact same thing with the lily petals. I really question if my brain is at all working sometimes, or is it just a weird white noise droning in there? I do like the way the colors blend on the lily petals, and I of course had to add those little powdery seed thingies that stain your skin and clothes or your nose when you get too close to smell them. The tulip took a lot of work to blend out those harsh shadows, but it came out really nice. This is why I love the combo of markers and pencils so much. Without the markers, it would have taken a ton of layers to get colors so vibrant and even, and so much time to get the blends nice. But without the pencils, the markers would just look kind of choppy and would not have as many fine details. After all of the flowers were done, I coated the whole thing in a thin coat of Mod Podge, making sure to use as few strokes as possible. After letting that dry completely, I glued it into the book. I made sure to start in the center and really press outwards. Oops, forgot to cut out a spot for the title. Back to pressing outwards to make sure that I get the flattest lay of the paper. And it's done. I debated a long time about whether I should add a background, but I actually really like it without. Yeah, I see things I definitely would have done differently, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it last page I'm going to do says draw your rose. Draw something that makes you happy. And of course, one of the things that makes me happiest is my animals. A lot of you have seen Bella. I've drawn and painted her a few times before. And I obviously need more practice. <laughs> That's terrible. But you haven't yet met Max. Max, friends, friends, Max. Max is a golden retriever that we got as a puppy in early 2022, but he only stayed a puppy for like a month, and then he turned into a giant horse. He's like the biggest golden retriever I've ever seen. But he and Bella are the bestest of friends and partners in all sorts of crimes. When I finally got it the way that I wanted it, I erased as much of the lines as I felt comfortable with. They might still be visible, but I was too scared of forgetting what it was supposed to look like to erase them as much as I normally would. I'm going in with markers again, mostly because I have no idea what I'm doing really, and that's what I'm the most comfortable with. I used a few different colors to sort of map out the highlights and shadows as best as I can. Looking back at the footage now, I don't even hate it just like this, except the demon eyes, but at the time I wasn't particularly thrilled with it. Also notice I added a rainbow to the page. The reference I was using had Max sitting on the end of a reclining chair, and I couldn't see all of him. So I had to hide the fact that I didn't know how to draw his butt, hence rainbow. For the pencil part of this page, I watched a few different tutorials on how to draw fur, especially blonde fur and white fur. I started with light colors, drawing short strokes in the direction of the fur. I alternated a few colors to get the right tone and slowly built up to darker colors in the shaded areas. I also worked in smaller sections as opposed to the whole body at once. For Bella especially, I focused heavily on adding highlights with white over the gray, since she is actually a white dog and not a gray dog. I went over the rainbow quickly with pencils just to straighten the lines a bit and so that it would match the pencil-y texture that the dogs have. For the background, I decided to be lazy and just go in with a full turquoise Posca pen. I don't usually use Poscas on paper for large areas like this, and both the Posca and the paper hated it. Streaky and dry and tearing up the paper. After a bit of trial and error, I found that barely pressing the marker to the paper and using super short strokes allowed the paint to flow nicely. Then I sealed the whole page in with Mod Podge. And it's done. I absolutely love this page. I feel like I'm getting better at drawing sort of kind of realistic animals, and I'm proud of my progress. Max sort of looks like a generic golden retriever, but Bella actually looks like herself, at least to me. 
So what do you think? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.